The next uh, topic of tonight, inshallah, will be under the following title, a short talk about a matter which, uh, you know, all need, or all of us need, and this is to know of, is anger. Anger. We all get angry. And getting angry is just one of our natural instincts. And anger affects everybody, young and old, Muslim or non-Muslim. But the difference lies with the way the Muslim approaches his or her anger, how it should be. Because there are some Muslims who are not abiding by the way to deal with anger, that you can't really differentiate them from others, from the non-Muslims or otherwise. We know that whenever someone loses their temper, then their anger begins to control them. It orders them and it forbids them and so one becomes subservient to one's anger without realizing it. <clears throat> this sadly happens very frequently. If we look into our own selves, on our lone lives, and often with disastrous consequences. People have cut off ties because of heated words ex exchanged in anger. People have killed each other because of their anger. You can hit someone or kiss someone because of your anger. The husband may hit the wife out of anger, or the other way around. But there is an urgent need for Muslims to put into practice the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and learn to control our anger. Anger in itself is not forbidden. We spoke about this early. Feeling angry is natural. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did not forbid anger in itself, but what has been forbidden is when we act upon the anger unjustly. He also told us what steps to take in order to control this anger. For example, Sulaiman ibn Surad relates that he was sitting with the Prophet ﷺ when two people fell out and exchanged hot words. The face of one of them became red and the veins of his neck became swollen. The Prophet ﷺ said, quote, If he could repeat a phrase which I know, he would get rid of the condition in which he is. If he said, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim," I seek refuge with Allah against Shaytan, the rejected one. Then that which he is experiencing would have gone away from him. This is reported in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Another time, the Prophet ﷺ said. When one of you gets angry while standing up, he should sit down. Then the anger will leave him. And if not, then he should lie down. This is a Sahih hadith reported by Abu Dhar in Sunan Abi Dawood. Subhanallah. Islam does not leave anything out. From aqidah, from creed, to morals and manners, we are told everything. If you sit down when you are angry, it shows that you are in control of your anger and not the other way around. Because when you do this action, you are now making yourself do something opposite to what your rage and anger and shaitan wants. I will repeat that Islam does not leave anything out. From creed to morals and manners, we are told everything. If one sits down when he is angry or she is angry, it shows that he or she are in control. They are in control of their anger and not the other way around. Because when you do this action, you are now making yourself do something opposite to what your rage and anger and shaitan wants. You are acting according to what Islam teaches you to do and so then your anger subsides. Controlling anger is very important because when we get angry we know 
we are going to say something that we will regret something that may ruin our dunya, our life and or our next life the Prophet ﷺ said a man speaks an evil word not realizing its importance for which Allah records for him his displeasure till the day he meets him <coughs> this is part of a lengthy hadith uh, reported by at tirmidhi and others and it is sahih it's correct in this way anger can destroy faith which is why we find that once when a man came to the Prophet ﷺ seeking some advice the Prophet simply said do not become angry repeating, repeating it several times what a beautiful piece of advice undoubtedly so many of our problems would be solved if we just heeded this one piece of advice on another occasion the Prophet ﷺ said the strong is not the one who overcomes the people by his strength but the strong is the one who controls himself while in anger and of course we all know that when we try to control anger then indeed you need to be very strong wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Abdullah bin Umar relates that the Prophet sallallahu said no gulp has a greater reward with Allah than the swallowing of rage which a servant suppresses seeking the face of Allah so when someone has done some wrong to you and you are about to say or do something that neither you or that person will ever forget and instead of acting upon his anger if you stop and swallow this then this something so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these ahadith which I mentioned should be taken in context it doesn't mean that we should never become angry or display our anger there are certain situations where we should become angry when Tawheed is being undermined for instance or when people are looking down upon the Sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, or when Muslims are being killed or treated unjustly we know that under circumstances such as these it is correct to be angry because there are many occasions like these where the Prophet ﷺ became angry for example when he saw pictures of animals hanging in Aisha's house as in Sahih al-Bukhari or when he heard of men who failed to attend the congregational prayer also as in Sahih al-Bukhari all these things caused him to be angry but his anger would always be for the sake of Allah never for any personal injury and that's why Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said she said about him the messenger of Allah never took revenge on his own behalf for anything unless something which Allah had forbidden had been transgressed in which case he took revenge for it for Allah's sake when we talk about anger it is not only the anger we feel when we are, when we are in the wrong but we also experience anger when we feel that we are in the right we feel that someone has wronged us and that we must defend ourselves here again we must not let shaitan the devil order us to act on that anger and be unjust making us believe we are correct in doing so the Prophet ﷺ said I am a clement for a house on the outskirts of paradise for one who leaves off arguing even if he is right and maybe our act of pressing anger when in a position to give vent to it will procure fruitful results Allah says in Surah Fussilat chapter 41 verse 34 repel the evil with one which is better then verily he between whom you and you are there is enmity will become as though he was a close friend Therefore, inshallah, we must try to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who would not become angry except for the sake of Allah. The Messenger وسلم, has left us with numerous hadith concerning anger and you can find them chapters on that in the books of hadith and we must really strive to implement 
this guidance and this is a reminder for myself Wallahi first and for all of us